Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and it looks like we got an Adele album bomb on Billboard Breakdown. You know, there have been some periods where I've gotten multiple album bombs in a row, and when it gets to this point where they're just replacing each other, I'm honestly not even that bothered, especially as we're near the end of the calendar year, and that means a bunch of old songs and holiday music are gonna scramble to fill in all the blanks. And given that I did already review the Adele album last week on my main channel, Hell, it might make things a little bit easier, at least for this week here where she slides in to replace the Taylor Swift album bomb and the mini Silk Sonic album bomb. And that starts off right in our top 10. Easy On Me by Adele is comfortably back at number one, mostly courtesy of radio dominance and strong streaming, although the sales have fallen off considerably, which did kind of surprise me. But it was comfortably enough to get over Stay by Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber at number two, which might have some sales, but lack on streaming and is openly slipping on the radio, even if the margin's kind of narrower there. Then there's Industry Baby by Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow at number three, which might be even more in free fall across the board, but it had enough to hold up over all too well Taylor's version by Taylor Swift slipping off the top to number four. And here it looks like it's a question of the radio, because while it slipped on streaming, the stales are still really good, it just has no airplay to drive up any traction further. Now this opens up the window for Oh My God by Adele to debut at number five off strong sales and streaming. We'll talk more about the song later on. And it was enough to yank itself over Shivers by Ed Sheeran at number six, which still has good sales, but the streaming is starting to fall off and the radio growth is slowing. And that puts in range Heat Waves by Glass Animals at number seven, which isn't really that far behind in every category. And hell, that was enough to pull over Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran at number eight, which is riding radio inertia but clearly on its way out, but it takes us to Need to Know by Doja Cat, which has all the radio inertia and nothing else at number nine, and then Smoking Out the Window by Silk Sonic holding on to number 10. Now, I'll admit I thought this would be gone from the top 10 this week, but the streaming is remarkably solid and the radio traction's on it kind of legit. If there's a song that's probably gonna be steamrolled by Christmas music, it's probably gonna be this one, but we'll have to see. I'm still hopeful. But on that note are losers and dropouts, the majority of which were album bomb material, but they also took out Come On Taro, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X, and Chasing After You by Ryan Hurd and Marin Morris with them, although that song was on its way out anyway. And that was also pretty true with our losers as well. For Taylor Swift, State of Grace went to 88, Red fell to 86, Message in a Bottle hit 74, apparently this pretty weak slice of synth pop is being intended as a single, of which I seriously question. And I bet you think about me with Chris Stapleton's at 70, along with a leave the door open from Silk Sonic sliding down to 50. Now from there, the rest of these are pretty scattered. Escape Plan by Travis Scott just continues to tank at 97. No Love by Summer Walker and SZA fell off to 66. Already Dead by Juice World collapsed off the debut to 61. Cold As You by Luke Combs slid a bit down to 46. Girls Want Girls by Drake featuring Lil Baby fell to 43. And Meet Me at Our Spot by The Angry anxiety seems to have its virality slip a little bit at 39. The only one I'm kind of disappointed with here is You Should Probably Leave by Chris Stapleton, which looks like it's gonna be a prime candidate to get caught in between years. Fun stuff. But the bigger news this week are our returns and our gains, where we had a considerable number, mostly because Adele's album bomb is a little bit smaller than what happened last week with Taylor Swift and Silk Sonic, uh, plus, you know, the return of the holiday staples also happened. So, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee's back at 14, Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms at 20, A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives at 27, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams hit 30, and Last Christmas by Wham! hit 40. Now the rest of our returns, they are squatting near the very bottom. Memory I Don't Mess With by Lee Bryce at 87. Poke It Out by Wale featuring J. Cole at 91. Half of My Hometown by Kelsey Ballerini and Kenny Chesney at 92. Volvi by Aventura and Bad Bunny at 93. Maybach by 42 Doug and Future at 94. Baddest by Young Blech, 2 Chains and Chris Brown at 95. Too Easy by Gunna and Future at 96. Who's In Your Head by Jonas Brothers at 98. And you Gaste y Sufri by Ezlebon Armando and Danny Lux at 99. Now our gains seem a little bit more healthy. 
for now, with of course All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey surging up to number 12. This is going to be in the top 10 by next week, just count on it. But the gains are always interesting to see what's actually recovering versus what's picking up steam in the wake of the album bombs, with the latter seeming just to fall with Super Gremlin by Kodak Black at 63. Charming. Then we get the songs that actually held steady but are picking up a bit now. One Mississippi by Kane Brown at 59, Whiskey and Rain by Michael Ray at 67, Big Energy by Lotto at 72, Freedom Was a Highway by Jimmy Allen and Brad Paisley up to 76, and For Tonight by Giveon at 83. But then there's our rebounds. Tequila Little Time by John Party at 75, Till You Can't by Cody Johnson at 77, Bubbly by Young Thug, Drake, and Travis Scott at 79, Woman by Doja Cat at 80, and and Moth to a Flame by Swedish House Mafia and The Weeknd at 84. Looks like there might be something there after all. But since we are in an album bomb situation for Adele, here are the songs that fell below the top 40, but are neither the best nor the worst of this week. Love is a Game at 56, All Night Parking with the late Errol Garner at 53, Hold On at 49, and Strangers by Nature at 41. And you know, that still leaves a reasonable list of new arrivals, starting off with number 89, Heart on Fire by Eric Church. Soaking my soul in gas and setting my heart on fire. So this might be a bit contentious as an Eric Church fan. I don't think he's promoted heart and soul as well as he could have. Now, granted, it wouldn't have been a really easy project to promote, especially in these times, as he put all the best songs on the and EP that's somehow still just available for the fan club and on vinyl, but even the songs he's targeted as singles feel way too spaced out to drive proper momentum. Keep in mind, Stick That In Your Country Song came out in the summer of 2020, and now we're here with a song that is good, but probably the weakest of his singles thus far. I mean, part of this will just maybe pointing to the Andy P or Russian Roulette if he won another single off of Heart, but this is a song that plays a little bit too close to Eric Church's formula of classic rock worship and really just is a more rambunctious version of a similar formula he worked on Hell of a View. It played with slightly more jagged southern rock riffs, some glittery saloon piano, a bit of a soulful female holler in the backing vocals, and a hazy acoustic bridge riding the Face that I honestly wish he probably could have given more space. I will say it's a little bit weird that Eric Church is referencing Elvis Presley here, mostly because it's 2021. You'd think he'd have a better reference given his music nerd side. And you know, I'm still not convinced that Jay Joyce is the right pick to give the song the muscle it needs, especially with Eric Church a little bit further back in the mix than I would prefer. But I can also recognize that for as much as Eric Church is working his Springsteen angle with this, it's a really damn good song. I got no faith Music Row is going to promote it worth a damn, but still, I like it. Number 85, Enemy by Imagine Dragons and J.I.D. Smell the sympathy, everybody wants to be my enemy. Alright, let me explain this. It's a theme song for an animated series based off of League of Legends called Arcane that is apparently getting really good reviews, and it's a collab for Imagine Dragons with a rapper who should really have a lot more traction than he does, produced by Matt Man and Robin. So you can understand why I had rock bottom expectations for this song, and that was appropriate because this really sucks. I mean, there's no coherent groove to speak of with painfully dated sounding trap percussion opposite gutless guitars, cheap sounding fake brass, and a bro step warp of synth from Matt Man and Robin. Actually, here's a question. Who from Imagine Dragons besides Dan Reynolds actually played on this song? I don't think I can hear any of them. My God, even Believer had more muscle than this and didn't feature Dan Reynolds spending way too much time in his upper register elongating syllables for this weirdly sour song that wants to frame him as being betrayed and taking on all of his enemies now and oh god i hate to say this but jid is not helping here why do i get the feeling he's here because imagine dragons can't get kendrick lamar anymore because this is basically an underweight kendrick verse with a lot more filler bars than actual punchlines. That's been an issue I've had with JID for a while now. But alright, I really hope this Arcane show is any good. The theme song though, not selling it. Number 73, God's Country by State of Mind and Drew Jacobs. Get you in the mound, the devil went down to Georgia, but he didn't stick around. This is God's country. 
country. It feels a little bit weird we're getting a song like this in 2021. I thought this was a phenomenon that burned out a couple years ago at the very least. Okay, context. Drew Jacobs seems like one of those country acts that's just shy of getting the machine behind him in Nashville, but also isn't really playing in the indie space, where State of Mind is a metal act that got most famous for playing a bunch of covers of pop songs, which I remember for bands like I Prevail, that's how they got their start. And that's similar to what this is. It's a cover of Blake Shelton's God's Country, and that's about it. And in theory, you know, this had the potential to kick a lot of ass. The song has the writing and atmosphere to fit well in metal, it should be an obvious slam dunk, but nobody here involved has the vocal presence of someone like Blake Shelton, and they can't really capture that huge, punishing blues rock side of the original, so you wind up getting with a pretty stock radio metal song, where the cover is the novelty. And that's kind of a shame, because there was potential to this, but the production and delivery just are not as good, and even if there's more crunch in the guitars, there's just not much in this arrangement that would put this above and beyond. Hell, not even that many screamed or dirty vocals. And for a song that I really like where this could have potential, it's a letdown. Just not interesting. Number 55, Woman Like Me by Adele. Is the worst trade to have? Are you crazy? You ain't never had, ain't never had a woman like me. After Easy On Me, it's probably Adele's best song on 30, and that doesn't appear to be a popular opinion. The guitars are muted and fractured against the brittle percussion and bass. The vocals aren't quite as well produced as they should be, a little bit too close to the front of the mix with a shade too much reverb. And the entire song is actually pretty dark, as Adele cusses out her ex-husband for his complacency, his insecurity, his distance, and refusing to acknowledge everything that she was bringing to the table. And you know, I like the complexity that comes in the framing and the detail details. Adele seems genuinely regretful that it didn't work, and she doesn't want to say anything like she does here, but it's not like she didn't try to make it work and stay quiet. Then the frustrated venom that she brings forward proves that she won't be silenced, and these are the hard words that she knows will hurt more deeply. At this point in the album, her pride might have been restored, but it lends the song a harshness that I'd actually argue is a major strength, especially as she knows that the framing of all of it does not make anyone look good. So yeah, this is the slice of emotional complexity of which I was hoping there was going to be a lot more of on 30 following easy on me. But even still, it's a great song. But on the topic of morally complex breakup tracks, number 51, A, B, C, D, E, F, U by Gale. I was told about this song on my Discord earlier this past week that it'd be the sort of Gen Z song that would cause all manner of discourse that would quickly become insufferable, and then an early version of me would have come down on it really hard? But now... Okay, Gail is a teenager out of Dallas. She went viral on TikTok with this song, but it's had something of a YouTube presence for the past year, and now she's got signed, and with this... I mean the swampier guitar and bass timbre, the husky vocals with the cadence somewhere between Billie Eilish and Black Bear, the slapdash cheapness of the presentation with her peers shouting behind her to tell her ex to go fuck himself, when apparently she ran out of patience with not punching back when he was being an asshole regardless. I mean, it's definitely a song that feels a little skeletal, maybe even a bit derivative, but it's not that obnoxious. And off the verses, she kind of sounds justified in being this pissed off. Now that being said, the angrier remix she has, it ramps up the drums and the pop punk guitar sizzle and it sounds a lot better, certainly more likable than the chill version of the song. And while I don't really think she's got the pipes to compete with somebody like an Olivia Rodrigo in this lane or any of the old pop punk girls, it, this is fine. I'm not gonna say it's exactly great, but not bad either. I'll stick up for this. Number 44, Cry Your Heart Out by Adele. Clean your face when you're in doubt. Go at your own pace. This is probably my least favorite song on 30, 
and I don't think that's a common opinion or anything either, but it features so much of what annoyed me on the album, despite having a little bit more of an actual groove, courtesy of the faster percussion and the organ-touched elements, that I want to explain why. Because no, I don't think there's anything wrong about Adele making a song about crying, letting all her feelings loose. But the execution of that idea feels really wonky, with this peppier walking tempo and letting the god-awful squawking backing vocals anchor the hook. It feels almost a little utilitarian in its approach and mood. Go on, snap out of it, start crying, and then get over yourself, back to life. I don't know, it doesn't feel realistic. It kind of hurts the album's sense of immersion, and it's neither fun nor effective in what it's trying to do least for me. Now this is an Adele song that got actively annoying with every repeated listen. Let's not make it a hit, even though it'll probably become one. Number 32, To Be Loved by Adele. Loved and love at the highest count. This is the big one, the penultimate piano ballad, thesis point of the album where the intimacy to Adele's presentation is key as she finally lets loose where you get the roots of her divorce or in order to find a love that's fulfilling and matches up with her yearning, she had to end the relationship and go off on her own. It's a moment of self-justification where she seems very conscious of the risk she's taking and Adele's performance has to sell the transcendent weight of taking it all on. And you know what, credit to her for a spare ballad that nearly runs seven minutes, she's kind of able to do it. But that being said, I appreciate the performance, but I think the writing needed a little more detail, especially on a song this long to really stick the landing. Especially as she says, she's got no regrets. So maybe a little bit more, flesh out who a song like this is intended to convince with such gravitas. Again, it is a good song, but I think Easy On Me hit these notes more effectively, at least for me. Number 26, Can I Get It by Adele. Can I get it right now? Can I get it? Am I the only one who immediately jumped to a tribe called Quest with Can I Kick It? Just me? All right, whatever. This is a song that's got some backlash for being a little bit more conventional on the pop folk stomp, especially with the whistle. Although the acoustic line honestly feels very 2000s in the minor key melody. But this is a song I actually like a decent bit, given how it builds up its choppy dramatic swell off the touches of horns into a hook that builds into a much rougher percussion drop and actually gives the track some real swagger to it. And hell, if Adele is using it for a coy track about hooking up with a new partner where she might be hoping for a little bit too much in the shallow LA dating scene, it does make a certain amount of sense that the song isn't as sensual or leaves her on a heavy note as it ends as she still has that void that a shallow hookup is not going to fix. So uh, yeah, you know what? I still like this song a decent bit. I think it's underrated. Probably would be a good single, even if it probably won't be. But I also get why some don't think it works. I still think it's good though. Number 23, My Little Love by Adele. Mama's got a lot to learn. It's I think I would like this song more if it was placed better on the album, because there is a lot to like about this. The somber, understated groove, the muted pianos, all the complicated feelings that she didn't bring up on To Be Loved, which is why that song left me cooler than this. It's one of the few cases where the subtle backing vocal swells actually work, and the punctuation of voice notes with her son and then her own diary breakdown at the very end are very effective. And I brought this up in my review, I really love the ending piece, where despite being an introvert, Adele is now facing real loneliness and drinking a little bit too much and then retreating within herself. And it's those very normal human details that have made a lot of Adele's best music. I really appreciate them here. But this is also over six minutes long, kept a very leisurely pace where the song fades out over over a minute and a half. And more importantly, it's a dramatic low point that's placed so early on the album that not only does it kill the momentum, it prevents any of the more revealing elements for having a better paced impact. Don't get me wrong, it's very good, but put this after I Drink Wine midway through the album, it'd be more of a gut punch. That's all I'm saying. But speaking of which, number 18, I Drink Wine by Adele. Over myself, stop trying to be somebody. 
This is one of those songs that just should be much better than it is. The piano line, the organ feel like an old 70s soul song with some obvious Elton John influences. Adele sounds terrific once again, especially with a really damn solid hook that opens up great on the final chorus. And I like the lyrical framework where she's questioning who the hell she's beholden to, what true satisfaction can even be as she's not seen it among a lot of her friends. And then maybe hopefully leaving things on a better note as she aspires to pull herself together and get up strong wrong, especially after a hard night of carousing. It would easily be one of my favorites on the project, but I'm sorry, those backing vocals are horrible, both in the placement of the mix, their production, and the delivery. I get that they're trying to do a retro girl group thing, but they sound like they're imported from bad musical theater. And for another song that runs long, they're just so hard to ignore as they slide all over the pre-chorus and the hook. Hell, she got more of a gospel choir on Hold On that would have put this over the top in the best way possible she had options so no it's not bad but my god it should be better and finally number five oh my god by adele I mean, at this point, I feel like a broken record talking about these tracks. Adele delivers a solid performance. The writing is generally aspirational, lands pretty well against a rollicking percussion line that kicks into a solid hook. But despite the good groove, the shrill, pitch-shifted backing vocals comprise the majority of the melody, and while they're not quite as obnoxious, they're layered in a way that feels very grainy in how they overlap with Adele's lead vocal. For a track that's clearly going for the pop crossover, I have no idea why they couldn't just let the mix breathe a little little more, instead of relying on such obvious compression and a stomp clap percussion line that just does not give the heaviness that gave Adele's previous material some legit heft, especially coming off the bridge into that final hook. So no, while this might have the great shot of being the next big single, I just don't think it's very good, at least to me. But you know, that's our week. It feels a little bit more manageable, but overall decent, with the best going to Woman Like Me by Adele and honorable mention to Heart on Fire by Eric Church. Now for the worst, yeah, Adele's getting the dishonorable mention here with Cry Your Heart Out. I don't like that song. But the worst is obviously going to Enemy by Imagine Dragons and J.I.D., which just stunk across the board. But next week, the onslaught of holiday music will continue amidst the fallout from all this. Stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.